Our first guest tonight is an Emmy Award-winning actress you know from her iconic roles on Friends and the Comeback in films such as Booksmart, Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion, and Analyze This. She's the executive producer of Who Do You Think You Are, which airs Sundays on NBC and streams the next day on Peacock. Let's take a look. Wow, that's, that is a, that's a great looking hat. And I am a hat lady. <laughs> that looks like Pharrell might have copied that <laughs> hat. It looks like it would fit my head. <laughs> If it was a little less than 400 years old, we'd yeah. let you try it on. Please welcome to the show the one, the only, Lisa Kudrow, everybody. I am so happy to have you here. I'm so to be here. I am also happy to find that we have something in common, especially during these summer months when a lot of people are drawn to it. Yeah. Uh, we both despise the beach. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I hate have the sand. Have you hated it your whole life? Um, no, when I was a kid, I didn't mind. Yeah. No, and then I got smart. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I don't like it I don't. All. The sand, you really said it. I think the sand is no. just, I don't care how beautiful the ocean is. No. The fact that it's right next to the sand is just a no, deal killer. No, the sand, it gets everywhere. Yeah. There are sand fleas, maybe. Maybe, no, yeah. I, don't, I, I didn't don't even like think it. about the sand fleas element of this. Well, I just gave you a <laughs> yeah. like more You know, evidence. the funny thing is my, uh, my wife uh, is the one who wants to go to the beach, and then we go to the beach, and then we walk off the beach, and she's like, will you brush the sand off yourself before you get in the car? And I'm like, or... We don't go to the beach. Ever again. Yeah, and then the car is pristine the way the car is supposed to be. Right, exactly. My husband doesn't like the beach either, but he lo he scuba dives, snorkels, and that is out of the question. Is that worse to you than me. being on sand? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, because I can't I can't live underwater. So, you <laughs> yeah, know, that's true. to me, my instincts tell me I don't belong there. Yeah. And then you put the snorkel on and you see it's another world and I want out. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, they want you out too. Those uh, beautiful yes. fish are not happy to see you. That is right. They're not there for my entertainment. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Would you, I, if you had to, would you rather scuba dive or snorkel given the two options well snorkel yeah scuba dive you have to learn how to do it right or you get i know seriously injured or die you i know, remember as a kid we went out to do a scuba diving i did it once with my family and like while they were giving the instructions i was just like this is a no we got to get out of here it's 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 what's called an unnecessary risk yeah exactly <laughs> right because a lot of other people do scuba diving they take pictures of all those fish you can just look at the pictures and then you're there good are to go so many shows <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of shows, look at that. Um, you've got this wonderful show. And this, so this was a show you saw uh, in the UK on BBC originally. Yeah, right. And did you immediately think, oh my God, I want to I wanna do that over here? Yes, I and did. Were you drawn to the idea of genealogy? Was this something that was always interesting to you? No. <laughs> okay. But not even a little bit. But this show had almost, like, ge genealogy was just the vehicle that got you to these phenomenal stories. Sure. About ancestry and about our history, and it's our shared history. And I felt watching it like, we're all connected. Like, when we hear these stories, I know about that. And, and look how it affected your family, what affected my family. Yeah, and I just thought, why don't, I actually just was kind of, angry. Why don't we have this show? What, we're <laughs> stupid? No, we're not. <laughs> you know, like, we would like totally watch this show. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for standing up for us. <laughs> On behalf of all Americans, I thank you. In a baby, did baby you, way. Did you yeah. know a lot about your genealogy growing up? Was your family the kind that shared that sort of thing? My dad did. He would go to the, like, Mormon temple and, and do research and, and all of that. But it was just like names and dates and, okay, so, oh, Fievel, Zelig, okay, that's interesting, but you don't know anything about them. But this show made it seem like, oh, but you can maybe, there are records maybe about people and you can learn something about them. So I got in touch with the guy who created the show and he said, yeah, we've been trying to do it in the U.S. for a long time. Let's try it together. And NBC said, yes. And, um, oh, God. I had to do the first episode. And were you, did you find out anything? Were you nervous? Because I feel oh, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done this once. I did one of the, I did one yeah. of the other shows. I um, watched it. Yeah. I love that show. But I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't nervous. Cause I feel like there's two kinds of nervous you can be with these shows. One, I was nervous mine was going to be boring. Right. The other one is that you find out. 
oh, some horrible bad things. things. Yeah. Yeah, but most people, I mean, look, for our show, I think what makes people nervous is they're actually going to the places where their ancestors were, and they know that they're interacting with historians, and I th people, I think, are really nervous that they're gonna look dumb because they don't remember details of history that, I'm sorry, were not taught, and yeah, we don't remember Mayflower landed in 1620, which I only know because we've had 10 people, <laughs> you know, I mean, I've seen it 10 times. But yeah, no, you're not meant to remember all that stuff. Do people come to you now and say they want to do it? Yeah. Do you, okay, so people oh, reach out. Yeah, because it really do. is. I mean, the way this show works, which is, as you mentioned, you people travel and they get to go to these places they would never go. Right. And I imagine some people that must be so magnetic an idea. Yeah, I think that is exciting to them. But I think they're also they just want to, because um, you know, you'll be walking in your ancestors' footsteps. There's just something about being right outside the building where. I mean, this is where I'm in the same spot. Yeah. Like, these are the same bricks that he touched, and usually it's a he. Um, <laughs> and, well, a lot of countries, they wouldn't let women touch bricks. No, yeah. that's right. See, you know more than you <laughs> I know think about, you yeah. do. No. I know that, I know Mayflower 1620. Um, <laughs> Until five minutes from now. <laughs> um, I, I want to ask this as well, because uh, the pandemic was a time where so many people went and watched old shows, and I'm wondering if someone uh, like you, I mean, with that said, I mean, it, it strikes me that uh, Friends was a show that people did not need a pandemic to go back and watch. But do yeah. you, have you found new fans over uh, with shows like Friends or, or The Comeback, yes. which is, is maybe? Yes. Oh, that's great. Yes. I mean, Friends is not shocking. It was when it was on Netflix and all of a sudden there were all these eight-year-olds who weren't born saying, oh my God, are you Phoebe? <laughs> 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 but, um, but no, the comeback, and then there's these young people who are like, oh God, I love the comeback. It's like, what, you do? <laughs> oh my God. So, but the most thrilling thing, I just have to say this, is my son had COVID, and so he was stuck, and called me up and said, so I just watched like episode, like the first two episodes, it's really good, mom. <laughs> I said, thanks. He said, can I ask you some questions about that? It's like. Yes! <laughs> I almost started crying. That's really great. I didn't think that, you know, anyone in my family liked that show. <laughs> <laughs> did you worry? So you obviously knew at the time uh, your son did not watch it. Well, no, he was five. Yeah. Six. Well, yeah. that's they say the comebacks for seven and, seven and above. <laughs> <laughs> did he, what is his relationship with Friends? Is that a show that he's... Watch. I mean, obviously, it was came. You know, he was he came after. But right, right. No, he was five when we okay. were finished. Gotcha. So, but still, um, no, no. He did start watching when his friends at school were watching, and you got to know what everyone's watching. Yeah. So he watched it, and and no, he was impressed. He said it's. Re he goes, it's actually really funny. It's like <laughs> this little kid. He he's said like, actually. That, kind of. Yeah, yeah. He's like it's actually really funny, and I mean the guys are so funny. <laughs> <laughs> and and he's like, no, I mean, you're funny too. <laughs> and I've never in my life have I wanted to tell my own kid like <laughs> you. <That's> not... <laughs> and I thought, I mean, I thought it. I you thought it. it. You didn't say it. No, no, that's I didn't really, say that, it. That's really. That's me. By the way, I think you know, for all parents, you think it. <laughs> the difference between a good parent and a bad parent right. is like, do you say it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, listen, it's not required that you're a fan. Yeah. And you don't have to like what I do. But don't <laughs> be so demeaning. <laughs> so, wow. Uh, you are uh, you were the voice of an animated poodle. Yeah, yeah, honey. Uh, this is very exciting. Yeah, her name's Honey. Honey. Yeah. Um, you have a real, You have, is this half a poodle or a full poodle? She's What's like your... a quarter poodle. A quarter poodle. Yeah, she's and... really cute and she's more elegant than that. Uh, do you have, yeah. Did you use her as any inspiration for the voice of the, uh, the fictional poodle? Yeah, I kind of tried. Yeah. You know, and then it just turned out to be me. But... Um... <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I mean, I, I, I tried. Do you, are you, uh, you and your husband both hate the beach. Do you both love the dog equally? Uh, yes, my husband, no, my husband loves her more. My really? husband, actually, this will sound weird, but it's true. He says all the time, I just want to take, I want to take her to Paris. He's French. <laughs> so he says, I want to take her to Paris and have dinner with her at the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
No, that doesn't sound weird. <laughs> no, I love her so much. And it's such a pretty view. Do they let, do they even let you bring dogs to the Eiffel Tower? I bet being Paris, they probably do, right? If they're small. Don't they bring their dogs everywhere? Yeah, Paris? maybe they do. Yeah. Well, you're the one who's married to a French guy. Yeah. I know, but I don't know everything <laughs> about well, it. Well, you're too busy learning about the genealogy of other celebrities. You don't have time for your husband. That's right, you see. <laughs> Hey, um, thank you so much for being here. It's such thank a delight you. to talk to you. Congratulations on the show. I can't wait to thank watch you. the new season. Thank Lisa Kudrow, everybody. Who do you think you are? Here's Sundays at 7 p.m. on NBC and streams the next day on Peacock. We'll be right back.